What up everyone, this is the Twice Over Film Club and I'm your host Faraz. Today we're previewing Vivarium, a listener suggested film. This film can be found on Amazon Prime for streaming. So after you've listened to this preview, go watch it and join us again next Thursday as we discuss the film in greater detail. Last week we previewed No Country for Old Men and our discussion for that will be out this Thursday. You can find No Country for Old Men for streaming on Stars. Make sure you're subscribed to the podcast so you don't miss any episodes. And if you want to make a suggestion, hit us up at the Twice Over on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. All right, so here's myself, Farhan, and Yusuf previewing Vivarium. I know everyone I know. <laughs> Who is he? No, I remember him. I just, I, I just didn't remember his name. I couldn't put the name to his face. He was, yeah, too young. I mean, did he even overlap with you, actually? I don't, or I don't was, think so. Yeah, he probably just... Um, Maybe he was a freshman, but I don't remember him at all in my senior year. Yeah, and then he probably just visited. When you visited, you probably met him, I'm sure. Yeah. Then, like, those no- names don't stick. Anyway, we're doing Vivarium today. 2019 film. Lorcan Finnegan directed it. I think this is my first film I'm watching directed by this guy. I don't even know who he is, so, um, yeah. Say that five times really fast. (laughs) Well, I had trouble figuring out the stars here. So, obviously, we know uh, Jesse Eisenberg. We've done other movies with him in it. But Mm -hmm. it's Emotion Poots. Is that how you pronounce it? Emotion? Emotion. 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 Yeah. You don't remember Imogen Heap? No. Yeah. The singer, dude. Mm, Um, What do you say? Yeah. Oh, that's who it is. Well, Farhan know knows it. Farhan Far- Far- knows it because it's a famous OC track. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was from the OC. I, know it I knew it. Of, exactly. That's how I know it because oh. the OC. <laughs> that's the end of season two. Uh, it's whenever I did not watch the OC. Misha Barton shoots the guy. I I don't even remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they did the SNL skit. Do you remember that? Oh, oh yeah, I remember the SNL skit. <laughs> and they, it's like yeah, they, they cut it. They in. just keep they shooting each it. other. Oh, that was lovely. <laughs> back when back when Andy Samberg was in SNL. Yeah, yeah, I remember the skit. I had no idea that's what it was referencing. It was funny yeah, on its yeah. own. So anyway, she has the same name as that person. Cool. That's the relevance here. Imogen yeah, yeah, Poots. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah, so this was a listener suggestion. This is suggested by Shums. Uh, Yusuf, you said uh, you got some thoughts from him as to why he picked this movie. So go ahead. First, I have to say, I think this is actually suggested by uh, his daughter, Zainab, who is our first infant listener. Um, so Shum says, Shum says told me um, in great detail that, um, you know, she's an avid listener. It's the soundtrack to all of her naps and their their weekend walks. Thanks for that, Shums. Thanks for the early exposure. He, he also mentioned when I when I said, I hope she recognizes my voice when he when she hear when she hears me in person. Uh, he said she will probably fall asleep because that's usually what she does when he puts on the podcast. That's so, so funny. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so this movie, Shump suggested it, and he he mentioned particularly that he thought it was just a really interesting portrayal of the American ideal. Mm. And um, I mean, I think I think we all walked away with 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 that thought, right? Um, so it's certainly a very interesting and very. Um, pointed portrayal uh, on that note um Mm -hmm. for some color i mean shumps is obviously newly apparent and so i thought this was interesting that he was like uh he he picked a movie that was like kind of showing the other side of the american ideal and i think that's that's something that he's thought about a lot and i think because he both agrees with certain points and very much disagrees with other points of this movie um the points it's trying to make about american lifestyle so i think kind of uh, something that Shumps also mentioned was depending on the stage of life that you're in, you may have a different take on this movie. And I think that is interesting. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Do you, did you have any specific, like, did you have any vivid thoughts in, in that regard for us also being, uh, you know, quite a new parent? I did. And um, I'm going to save that stuff for the discussion because I do want to get into it. Yeah, I, I think that's fair. But I just, I wanted to know if that's kind of something that was on your mind. So I think, I think that's, uh, that's cool. And that's certainly going to be worth discussing. I don't think the scores, considering how uh, objective we try to be, <laughs> I don't know if that really affects the scores too much, depending on where you are in, in your life to care. About. I don't know. We'll see. For one category. For one category. Yeah, for one category, for the themes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think so. Uh, and I, I certainly was trying to pull my hand back a couple times where, you know, like sometimes when I'm scoring and I feel a certain strong way, I start, I have to stop and kind of think like, where is that opinion coming from? And if it's just coming from like very personal experience or opinion, then that probably doesn't fit into our scores, right? So that's something that's kind of, it's been, it, it's, a, it's an interesting balance to try and make that distinction. Okay, so hmm. with that said, let's go into our scores. I'll start with the narrative. I gave this a 50. I'm at a 55. Interesting. 
I went with the seventy. Okay. You guys didn't like it at all. Huh? Uh, yeah, I didn't. I did not <laughs> think it. Uh, it met the merits of like an average movie. I, like it's a boring story. Pretty much nothing happens. What happens? It could have been a short film. It could have been like a thirty, maybe twenty minute short film, and gotten the same points across. In my opinion, this is that's true. I have that. I have that written in my notes also for us, which I feel yeah. like this happens too much. Where I'm like, you just said a thing. I had in my notes, but that's good because <laughs> where, uh, yeah, like I was like. If they just made this a short film, I think it would have been super, super engaging. Yeah. Um, but rather than that, it felt a little bit repetitive because they were getting the same points across over and over. Part of that, I think, is by design. That doesn't make the most engaging plot, unfortunately. But mm -hmm. I think that was by design to a degree. Farn, what did you like about it? I, I didn't feel bored at all. Really, I didn't feel bored at all watching the movie. Mm -hmm. And that's saying a lot. I thought, I mean, yeah, I, there's the story itself. Like, you know, in terms of, like, the, quote, narrative itself, it was, yeah, you're right, not a lot happened, but not a lot does need to happen for, and for them to um, make it as, I thought, engaging as they did, to make the, to produce the tone that they were looking for throughout the movie, took some really good direction. Yeah. Um, because you, you definitely feel a specific way watching this movie. Yeah, that's yeah, true. Definitely. And they, they did things with intent direction wise, you know, um, they executed things really well in terms of producing twilight zone sort of feel making you uncomfortable. You're wearing the direction pretty heavily here, which is fine. I just thought the narrative was bad and bad enough that uh good direction Fair enough good direction yeah. didn't matter too much to me can i can i upgrade to a, a 65 actually or no. i'll say a 60 i'll say a 60. <laughs> okay. uh, i want to go up five points because i i think i didn't what farhan just said i agreed with a lot and i just like kind of ignored it when i was scoring because <laughs> it, it is very it is very very intentional and they mm -hmm. they do that they control that very well so like i said i think they they meant to be repetitive for reasons um and <laughs> Uh, and they and they were they were effective in doing that. You know what I mean. So yeah. I, I don't actually want to. I I want to give them some credit for that. So so yeah. I just think and it's also it's not fair to say like nothing happens in this movie. I think a fair amount does happen. Yeah. And yeah. and and there there is a lot to be engaged by. And, mm -hmm. and like I said, I, I think I, I think maybe just something more compact would have done that maybe more effectively. But that's that's not to say that's that's kind of a, a choice that you know, one person, one director would make over another. And so, you know, mm. I would say uh, there's not enough to be engaged, but there's enough to be intrigued to continue watching. <laughs> okay. What? <laughs> Thanks for just giving us a synonym for engaged. No, for man, there is a difference. <laughs> You're intrigued, In right, but not okay, enthralled. So. Intrigued? Intri <laughs> <laughs> but with intrigue, like, hey, something's going to happen. Whereas with engaged, it's like it's, it's happening, so I'm I'm engaged right now. <laughs> so, I mean, all right, let's yeah, let's throw the terms out. But I guess like basically, you're saying that you 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 were your interest was peaked, but you didn't feel like that was that was worthy in the end. It was kind yeah, of like no. it fell flat eventually. Is what, yep. is what you're getting at? Okay, all right, all right. that's fine. So let's go into the writing. Fair. I give this a 60. 60. 55. Yeah, I think a lot of the dialogue seemed a bit expository. And there's also other sequences where I think they, they weren't expository, but I don't know. It's like they just felt, again, I think it just felt like they were conveying the same thing um, through across multiple scenes. Mm -hmm. um, right. Yeah. You know, inner frustrations of characters, things like that. But I, I just didn't feel like we learned something new at every exchange. Yeah. And it's, you know, I don't, I don't think it was a focus. They relied on, um, you know, the events that are happening or the environment to provide information that we need rather than dialogue it's just not a focus and that's okay yeah. it doesn't have to be yeah it's not it's, so it's not a strong suit of the movie but it's also yeah. so <laughs> i guess i should mention this i had no idea this would be in the slight horror uh genre i get it really isn't fully but me neither semi yeah. right um happy halloween guys by the way true <laughs> hell yeah <laughs> this is why we chose this movie what do you we were looking through the listener suggestions and we were like let's be festive so yeah this is totally intentional guys so i was gonna say with the writing like it's when, when it is in that genre you're not it, it's supposed to be very deliberate in terms of making it creepy and it does that but in doing so it's not natural feeling and 
I, li- I like my writing and dialogue to be natural. You don't think it was natural? Nah. Well, are you talking about? Is it for, okay, we can talk about this discussion. Yeah, we'll we'll get into <laughs> yeah. it. I, I would say I'd probably agree more with Faraz that it was a little bit unnatural at a, at a lot of times, and like you said, they're just they're relying on other aspects of the movie to do that. This this kind of happens in a movie, which as we'll discuss, there's like larger allegorical things going on, so they can rely on that to convey a lot of things. Uh, whatever, you know. I just I'm not going to to score them higher just because they weren't focusing. On the writing so that's why it is where it is i just don't think yeah yeah i, I don't think it was the intention and that's totally fine um acting here i gave it a 75 70 Ooh, for me i gave it an 80 i thought it was pretty good especially that image and puts girl i remember who i've never seen overall like she was uh battling with trying to stay with battling with like normalcy in the context of the situation that she was in I thought she did a really good job doing that. Jesse Eisenberg was pretty much the same duty as every single movie. <laughs> um, I felt like there was no difference. You might as well have just taken Zuckerberg from Social Network and put him in this movie. That's this is what opinion. goes on in Mark Zuckerberg's brain. This is yeah, yeah. They're all interconnected <laughs> movies. Okay, this is the Zuckerverse. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. yeah it, I think I think you're right. Right. Like I mean. I don't know. I, I hope Eisen. I think Jesse Eisenberg has more range than the three movies we've reviewed of his to this point. <laughs> um, but like, yeah, I think I even saw a quote by um, by Roger Ebert where he was just saying like, you know, he, Eisenberg is a talented performer, but he's he's not good enough to to suggest the 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 intense feelings. I'm trying to I'm trying to paraphrase, but he's trying he's not good enough to suggest the intense. Uh, emotions and feelings that he's asked to do in like such a short time frame and I think that felt right to me where like there's large stretches of the movie where they weren't asked to do much and then when they were it was like very quick mm-hmm. uh, so those scenes were a bit fleeting and and you're not going to get good acting performances uh, or deep acting performances in that in those types of sequences so I think my score is reflective of that it didn't bother me but I just I didn't feel like I was seeing very much talent displayed either yeah mm-hmm. I agree with both of you on those on all of your points um, we can go on to the themes. Here I give it an 80. 85. 85. So I think we're, I mean, uh, we'll, we'll see how we round this out, but I think we're mostly in agreement on the different categories, more or less, other than I yeah. think Baran was a little bit different on the on the narrative, right? So, uh, I mean, I think we're, we're kind of agreeing where this movie is strong and where it's not. Um, mm-hmm. So, I mean, themes-wise, what, what did you guys like? Yeah, I think we've already talked about some of it, right? Yeah, uh, what Chumps highlighted was i think pretty spot on expect except i wouldn't even say just american life it's just life in general this movie is taking the monotony or the seeming you know seeming monotony of rearing a child and um making it something that is like detestable (laughs) yeah like i mean they made a horror film out of that right so (laughs) where is that going to take you yeah so i think but uh, they there's some really interesting messages that they've that they've put into the movie about that whole process about the monotony of it about how parents respond when their child acts a certain way or is a certain way or is different than what they want them to be you know all of that kind of stuff they to where they might even not even f- consider them a child anymore not consider them their child their monsters all of that is is display is basically just really literally and very intentionally displayed throughout the movie Mm -hmm. like you cannot miss those messages yeah Yeah, i think i think that's right i mean they're they're so pervasive and it's not i didn't feel like i wouldn't say it was in my face um because there's nobody you know they're not going to have a character on screen who literally like tells you the theme right right Uh, right. for us we were talking about this with no country for old men where tommy lee jones's character does that to a point and it's like Mm. it's almost like if you if you state a theme coen brothers movie right (laughs) (laughs) okay uh i mean if you state a theme on screen and that's the only support for that theme you really have that's that's not a theme that's not a theme at all here it's (laughs) quite the opposite where nobody's saying it but there is no way you can miss it at the same time right and i think it is quite disturbing kind of what they show you uh to the point where like my mind kind of wanted to reject some of the some of the the the, the notions uh, mm-hmm. that they were putting in front of me and but the more I thought about them you know the more I could see that side of the coin um, yeah. it's almost like there's certain like behaviors and certain you know actions that we that we watch and I think like that's crazy but then when I when I reflected a little bit more I realized like you know you could take that same action and like totally dress it up another way. And it would be like, how cute family life. And it's like, 
yeah. you know, we, we do that. That's kind of like an internal thing where we decide how we want to feel about a certain thing. We project that, right? So, I mean, they're taking those same things and they're projecting it in quite a different way. Um, and I, I think that's interesting. That's, that's a side that we don't normally get to see. So whether you agree with it or not, I think that is a worthy theme. Mm -hmm. Most definitely. I really don't have much more to add to what you guys just said. But like you guys said, this this is clearly one of the, the elements of the film that are, it's easily one of the more well done parts of the movie. Yeah, I think so. I think even comparison to other movies, they theme, they did such a good job with balance, I believe. And honestly, I, would I score this in 85? I'm tempted to score this higher because I'm thinking about the balance now. Because it's obvious, right? But it's not in your face. Mm hmm and for for a theme for a movie being what it is, right? This psychological thriller, horror kind of thing, and it not be in your face, and it be just enough, but nothing more. That takes a lot of uh, I don't know. I, I think that takes a lot of skill consideration, obviously, to skill during the during the direction process. But I don't know. I see some of that you could probably put into the narrative score. But I think I think I'm gonna give my this, give this a ninety in theme. Okay. I'm thinking about the balance now. Dang, we're talking ourselves into higher scores here. <laughs> oh, um, I do think that's what, again, it's a strong suit where uh, a themes. One of the biggest things for me is takeaway, and this is the kind of movie where you are thinking about it afterwards, and the more you think about it, the more impressed you can be about it. So and and it, and it's not one dimensional either. Yeah. So I mean, I always appreciate that. I think the only reason I didn't go higher is that I I do feel like there's. There's actually several thematic elements or like I should say several al allegories being displayed and they all come across, but they don't really go together. Um, so it's kind of a little bit confusing to try and reconcile um, the different elements there. Um, and so I didn't love it from that standpoint. We'll talk about it more, but I just I just felt like they brought in some sci-fi elements and they're like, okay, here's this other idea mm -hmm. that we can also kind of expose. Um, and then it was like, well, that doesn't really fit with it. You know, from the balance standpoint, that part bothered me, I guess. Uh, but I do, I think, in general, I agree with what Farhan is saying as well. So uh, but that, that's why I, I gave it quite a high score, but just not, you know, um, not ecstatic. Sure. All right. Let's round it out with the aesthetics. Here, I give it a 75. I'm also at a 75. Uh, 65 for me. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I thought they were pretty decent. The visuals were pretty different. And like Farhan mentioned, they create that Twilight Zone type world. It's eerie. It's creepy. Um, it's disturbing. I thought the colors were good. Uh, the framing was good. The most of the shots were good. There were some really nice uh, shots in contrasting day and night. The use of shadows was good. It was uh, it was just a pretty good film in terms of aesthetics. I also like the sound too. <laughs> I don't know like how they did like the voice acting for the kid, but yeah, it, it was yeah. I, I guess I count that under aesthetics because. It's the feeling you get from from just that voice. Uh, yeah, you know what? You're right. I'm gonna pick this a 75 score. <laughs> that was um, yeah. You definitely get a really. They do a good job setting that creepy feeling. What I was talking about, how they you know through the what they didn't do through the writing, they did through the environment. I mean, I think that's very true. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I actually, I probably scored it down for the kid's voice <laughs> um, <laughs> because like, I get what you guys are saying, but also like, didn't it feel like you can like see right through the screen in that moment? And like, I mean, it didn't even look like his lips were, were, were voicing that, you know what I mean? So like, it was not only like out of place and creepy, but also it was like, okay, so that's the post-processing that they, you know what I did? Right, it's right. like, it's almost like yeah. you can very clearly see what's going on there. I'm, I'm not even picky about that kind of thing generally, but I just felt like I was like, that doesn't even like, it just took me out of it for a little, for a moment. So I think there was certain points where I was like, they're trying to make it like, be like unreal or grotesque, but it's like, if you pare it back a little bit, then it won't ruin the kind of the, the illusion you're creating, I guess. I don't know. So that's kind of, and again, I gave it a 75. So like, I, I certainly I all liked a, a lot of it. Yeah. We all gave, <laughs> yeah, we all gave it a 75. So, um, above average. You're not wrong. You're not yeah. wrong. Yeah. Also, I thought they, um, I'll just mention, um, since, uh, Fahad is not here, <laughs> they, they did use, um, um, colors very intentionally as well so like <laughs> they were right i mean I, I don't think you could have missed that also that's going to be my yeah. thing from now on every time fahad's not here i'm going to mention colors um so that yeah. he doesn't have to <laughs> but you have to say it you have to say it like fahad <laughs> I, I, i'm not very good at voices so um i will just critique the boys the voice i thought the colors were really good <laughs> the colors were great and, you're so off know. dude <laughs> i don't know he's just got such a he's got such a good 
radio radio phone? voice yeah. i don't know how to i don't know how to do it if i it. could do that voice i would do it all the time yeah my, my, my podcasting voice sucks let's be real so. <laughs> well your podcasting voice is just your voice so yeah so my voice sucks let's be real <laughs> <laughs> no all right so uh, as far as how we scored this movie we clearly like themes the most we average it out to an 85 acting aesthetics we like next uh, at 75 Writing and narrative are not the strong suits, but um, depends on how you how you approach the movie. Again, like Farn says, psychological thriller slash horror. Maybe uh, writing is not usually a strong suit for those kind of films, and it's not necessary for it to be a good movie. Yeah, take that for what it's worth. I think what Shum said or Shum's thoughts that were mentioned early on, uh, the themes are what this movie is really about, and I assume that's what we're going to be mainly discussing as we move over to the discussion next thursday i think that's right thanks for listening to this production of the twice over if you haven't already subscribe and follow wherever you get your podcast and remember to support us on patreon or by sharing the podcast with a friend feel free to contact us on instagram twitter or facebook at the twice over or email us at comments at the twice all of the music you heard is from amerigo gasway check him out on bandcamp and spotify